this double dragon. I don't know why they're running the card shop to the and the Gudra here. But Team Rise, they're running the Dragonite again. It didn't work out for them when they went up against Sora Tigers Gaming in game number one. And we'll see if this will translate into a win for them here in game number one, Danny. Oh man, lots of exciting stuff happening here, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to be looking at a central lane Blaziken here for Kabuchans. It's going to be that top lane um, Guard Chomp on the side of Rise. Kind of curious to see how some of these Pokemon are going to function with one another, um, especially with how that top lane is actually looking for both of these teams. Just the whole double, double dragon. Who's the better dragon here? Is it going to be the Garchomp? Is it going to be the Gutra? We'll find out soon. We are seeing a bit of a skirmish down in that bottom lane, but so far they are whittling away at both of these Eevees. And hang on a minute, they got the KO there onto one of the Eevee Lucians here. Very they, unfortunate. Uh, it's actually a really good thing that they did manage to actually take down one of the Eevee earlier on because you wouldn't want to go up against them once they've already evolved. So basically, that's the best chance they actually have because now you're looking at Two Pokemons, the Bulbasaur to get a Squirtle, which has double evolutions, up against two Eevee, which, is, which are going to be uh, their evolutions at level 4. Meanwhile, here in top lane, it's going to be Dragonair. Ooh. Oh, man, punishing the team members from oh, TGS at the current moment as well, dropping them out to ensure that they're not able to actually do any form of scoring as well. It's a one-to-one -one though, so it was the Gipple for the Blissey. So one-to-one -one trade, not ideal, a little bit too deep there for Rise um, to go for that one-to-one -one trade, but I suppose aside from that, you're not going to be really using as much. Although I am a bit disappointed that Dev was the one that had to get knocked out there. Lots of support coming in from the central area here for Kabuchans, realizing that Eeyore is spending a lot of time in that top lane because they've actually decided to swap things out here. So they're going to be sending Dev into that central area he is being harassed, however, by that Umbreon, so he's not having a free time in the central lane. And it looks like the central birds are going to be going in favor of Kabuchans. I think it was actually cleared by the Blaziken there, so Rise a bit late to the party. And because they are running two Pokemon that have three stage, well, I mean, that almost their entire lineup is three stage evolutions, oh, no. no one is actually hitting their stride yet, beside the Venusaur. I believe that we did kind of miss out a little bit of actually going on there. Uh, now, talking about the Venusaur thing, um, it. it since they're running both the War Total together with the Venusaur, it's a great idea for them to actually get the Venusaur to Mesa. But meanwhile, all this happening here in top lane, Team KS just punishing Team Rice here at this top lane, at this current moment itself. Giving an opportunity to actually break the goalpost from the side of Team Rice on the top side. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, it seems that this is where the next action will be here. We do see the rotations coming up team members. The Elder Gods to get a Venusaur, a lot of sustainability, and War Total is also quite durable as well. There's nothing much this Espeon can do other than harassing from time to time. Meanwhile, the Cavalry has arrived here. Ooh. The Umbreon together with the Blaziken. Blaziken. Instead of the Blaziken unleashing all attacks upon the team members from Team Rise. The member was not able to actually do any form of takedowns right after the one they just received just a while ago. Yeah, and this is a level 9 Blaziken as well, so he has not had a horrible early game at all. If anything, he's had a fantastic one. And because of this too, Ryze are actually kind of struggling to deal with that Blaziken. He does so much damage in these fights, and he's always going to be threatening with that overheat. So depending on how your positions are on the side of Ryze, things could get a little bit hairy. Um, I am quite surprised that Askew has decided to go for the Petal Dance build on the Venusaur. He has the mobility, he's going to be able to man fight a lot of these Pokemon in um, melee range in particular um, the Gudra as well as that Blaziken. But in the long term, I want to know, is this going to be enough to actually keep Askew in these fights or would it have been a better choice to go for the Solar Beam because they don't really have any ranged attackers outside of the Dragonite. Dragonite in the meantime actually getting a knockout by himself and will unite out of a team fight. So no KOs on the side of Kabuchans, no counter KO. I think Rise, they're not doing too bad in terms of trying to keep up with Cover Chance, but they're going to continue on with the pressure here with that Blaziken. Do not let Rise farm any of this map because compare the two compositions, late game, Rise are rocking the late game. Oh, yeah, that's for sure on this. But really, I like the point when you mentioned uh, why the Venusaur was not running because they don't really have any hyper attackers at this current moment. Probably having a range attacker will be actually a great thing. But the thing is, is since the opponents from Team KS is actually running things like Blaziken, uh, the Aspion as well. So I guess mobility would be something that he's on the lookout for as no moment. So as long as he can sustain, he can actually shout more damage rather than being fragile. Because if he doesn't have the pedal dance, he would not have the mobility and would have to just 
sticking around with just Look. either having XP or yeah. even having Jack, which is kind of trouble. So if you don't have that, I then think he'd just gone. be cooked by Blaziken as well. Like <laughs> yeah, Blaziken gonna... gets anywhere near that Venusaur. Oh, bye bye. Um, um, Dev though, actually uh, forced to use his Unite there. It's not going to connect. He will back to, uh, back towards that goal zone. So no KO, but that did force out the Limpid Outrage. Something that you're not going to be worried about now if your Cabbage Chan Surf used onto that Espeon to actually prevent it from going towards that bottom objective. Do not want to give away that free Reggie Steel buff to a Espeon. It's stored power though, so stored power not the best move. Looks like they will secure it there with Eeyore and they get the KO onto the Espeon. So unfortunately for Cabbage Chan, no sneaky steals. Yeah, kind of unfortunate. But I, mean, I think the only one that's available there was the Espeon. I think that should just make an escape rather than trying to actually snatch a moment between three Pokemon from the side of team. He has been well while all that is happening. At the same time as well, he has managed to secure themselves the uh, Reggie Lucky at the top lane here, making a four man rotation through the middle area to send that Elder Goss together with the Dragon Eye. I mean, that is very, very durable Pokemon, and it should be okay. But of course, driving. These blazing get to the wow. back line here on their side, right? Of Blaze course. Assist. Oh, Hydro Typhoon, you're going to realize now, but the snowfall coming from behind comes back with yet another surf to the right side. They're meant to get their hands here on that. Let's see. Now they're going to gun in for more here. Chasing oh, now. Yeah, no, no, and they got their hands on the Espeon. They don't have the damage anymore, Daddy. Oh, no. This early game from Kavi Chance, it just wasn't enough. They just gave too much space to rise. They gave them too much map, too much time to level up that they've actually started to out-level these Pokemon on Kabi Chan. And again, I'm going to say this again, Ryza's late game is scary. They have some of the best late game Pokemon. And if we look at that Rayquaza fight, there is so much crowd control that Kabi Chan's have to worry about. The Livid Outrage being able to KO through Squishies as the game gets later and later. They're also going to have Eeyore that can come in with that Unite. The simple stagger that can set up for his team. You have Axe Q that wants to get on top of the Squishies with his Petal Dance. He's going to be doing more damage as well after using his um, Burden Anger and the most important one, Hydro Typhoon. If you hit, if you get hit by that Hydro Typhoon, bye bye. Yeah, bye See bye. you next game. Yeah, I pull up that together with everything else, and you also have the Elder Goss on the back line as well, providing a little bit of redemption for the team. And all that will be revealed very, very soon as we're 2 minutes and 35 seconds into the game at the current moment. Everybody gathering on. The party is currently here at the bottom lane with Reggie Steel. And everybody's looking forward to get this attack and special attack buff. Taking up all those damage and, squi and also squeezing out is going to oh, be this. Surf. Oh, look at that surf hitting up on tree. Of course, you. looking for a Pell Dance as well. But insufficient to clear out or take down any of the team members from Team KS. And look at this. This is four players. Dev isn't even here. Dev is actually at the rave hit. So for Rise to win a five versus four, to not, they didn't even they didn't even have to knock anyone out. They just zoned them away. That's enough. And now the fact that Rise have the point advantage, they can threaten to just rip through the Rayquaza or just zone Kabi Chan's out. There's there's literally only one way for Kabi Chan's to win, and it's either technically two, somehow get the Rayquaza flip, or by some miracle beat Rise in a five v five. Wow, but I think that the second option is going to be tough. I mean, like, looking at the sets that can actually come in from Team Rise at this current moment. Now, of course, being in full control, Team Rise screening out the team members from Team KS, trying to even enter the Rayquaza pit over here. Look at this, they have the Blast Stars on the front lines. Even the Blastic is trying to find a point of entry here, but still not being able to actually do so. Here comes oh, the Blaziken so charging forward no. as well. They couldn't get the Elder Goss. Pretty big commitment as well. The eject button being used so that the Elder Goss doesn't get knocked out. They still have the Unite available, so if they need any kind of healing, it's going to be there. This is just also available, but is it going to be a defensive one or an aggressive one? Blaster has been caught out by that Umbreon. Here we go, Limit Outreach being used by Dev. Can he get a big knockout here? They found the Umbreon in the process, and Ballisti goes down as well. And this poor, poor Espeon trying to outrun a Venusaur with that Petal Dance. The fight's still continuing, though. Super Low Blastoise being healed up by the Elder Goss. Now, Elder Goss will go down. Zoe, unfortunately, just losing too much health down bottom, though. Eeyore having to get away from this fight. We still have a few Pokemon here. Two Pokemon left on Kabi Chance, but look at this Axe Cube, Petal Dance, Venusaur. It's going to be hard to outrun this big bad boy. He's angry. He wants to win. He wants that rematch against Talon.
no, but the thing is, KS is actually going to be the ones who actually get themselves with the Rayquaza at the current moment. This could be an opportunity for them to actually overturn all this. Goes up and with a big hundred here by this Blaziken. Can now, of course, Dragonite tries to go in to actually do a little bit scoring here on the goalpost as well. Ten seconds on the clock at this current oh. moment. Is this going? Will this be a win for Team KS or will it be? for Team Rise, Danny. I think Kabi Chance may have done it, securing the Rayquaza. We saw multiple scores, and I believe only Blastoise scored for Rise. So... But is that enough? I, I think it's enough. To to overtake back. And there we go, Kabi Chance getting the victory. Oh, Look, still... they, they're not even happy about it. They're just like, oh my gosh, I look at their reaction, and I'm like, are, are you sure? Like, Kabi Chance won? Or... I think I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's on the yeah, screen. Yeah, it's behind on the screen. Yeah, I'm actually yeah. quite surprised that they're not happy about what this. What could possibly be the difference between these two points right now? I do not see the... What was the word that you used? The, it wasn't integration. Like was it The synergization of of, uh, of the composition coming out from... Uh, from the synergy. Yeah, yes. yeah, synergy. Yeah, so even if you set... Um, yeah, with the Mew, but usually that's not enough. Yeah. I kind of hope that the Urshifu might be the solution for the Glaceon as well. I think if there's one Pokemon, and if you're in Kabichons, if there's someone you're looking out for, Dev might be somebody you want to be careful of, but I think Eeyore's Glaceon. You cannot let him just attack for free from the mid to back. Like, he's just going to do too much damage. Um, regardless of who he's hitting, like, even Crustles just melt to Glaceon if you let those uh, Ice Shards, con uh, sorry, the ice Icicle Spears connect back to back. So, got to give the respect to that Glaceon. If they can somehow figure out a way to catch him, if they can somehow get a Crustle to non-stop Rock Tomb, that might be the solution to control your. Yeah, but the thing about Team, team Rise is they do have the Clefable there, so he's going to be a mid-range. So he's going to be in between uh, the, range, the range attackers, between some of the frontliners, the Trevenant, um, and even the Sylveon as well. So basically all this sustainability in case of anything happens. So they're trying to go protect Glaceon, and if it, they have this information in hand, Danny, and they know that this might happen, so they are on the ready. Probably Glaceon will provide the assistance that they need here if anything will happen. But meanwhile, he does even in the bottom lane, but you decide to actually make an escape over here, Sylveon. Pushing out a lot of damage. Oh, beautiful body block, though, coming in from the fan top. Luna doing a great job as the team defender. Gotta give him a promotion. He knows how to play his role. <laughs> but Axe Q, though, trying to be a nuisance here. This Mew doing a pretty good job, though. Solo Crustle's gonna be coming back to assist in the lane. Meanwhile, in that top lane, though, Eeyore is just being a nightmare for Kabu Chans. Meanwhile, in that top, uh, in that bottom lane again. Oh, <laughs> super close for Aluna. But he does get the evolution off before the Solar Beam fully got the connection. This man knows his limits. I think most of the action will be happening here at the bottom lane instead of the top. Because the thing is, if you look at the size of K, uh, the side of K. Yes, they are running the Ivysaur together with the Elder Gas, so more towards the sustain side. They don't really have to damage, so it will require Pokemons like uh, Urshifu to rotate around to ensure that they have to damage the lady, such as anyone. Meanwhile, Mimikyu being a little bit slippery here, oh, getting in gosh. between the three Pokemons and managing to disengage easily and safely in between them as well, back to the goalposts. Gotta be so careful with Eeyore around that corner. All he needs is vision, and that's what Dev's job is. Just to provide vision, sit in the bush, tell his team, all right, they're coming from this way, find your target and try and connect. But beautiful connection coming in from that Mew, just going in for the Electro Ball combo to finish off that Sylveon. So Axe Q gonna be sent home and we'll have to walk all the way back into lane as his two supports try to hold down that bottom lane. Up top though, we're seeing a lot of pressure coming in from Kabu Chans, but actually there's very low Urshifu ejects and throat chops just to get out of there. Thankfully, won't get KO, but this does slow down the push again in that top lane. And it's all thanks to Eeyore, this man single-handedly stopping these pushes from Kabichan. Yeah, in the moment itself, despite it being a 2v3 situation at the top lane team, Ryze is holding very well. And actually, they're the ones um, being on offense instead of their opponents in Team KS. Oh, they're still fighting in that central area yeah, exactly. as well. exactly. They're not done yet with things. And meanwhile, in the bottom lane, this is where some actions are happening as well. Reggie Rock has appeared, and this could be the opportunity that Team KS is looking for as they're trying to secure this last set on them. Mew is going to be the one getting secure, of course. He does have the Electro Ball as well as his Solar Beam as well to, to just do just that itself. So, meanwhile, the bottom lane, Remember that KS now has defense and special defense buffs, so you have to be careful with it. Force of the Jack on the view makes his way towards, towards the top side and being a little bit covered from the Urshifu. Meanwhile, Crustle, man, he's basically it's a Crustle Eldegoss combo here for sustainability. 
surprised that they actually gave away that top Reggie Alecki for cover chance, but I suppose they are prioritizing leveling up instead, keeping that map empty and preventing Ryze from getting that free experience. But to be fair, this game is still pretty close. Cubby Chance haven't really focused on completely shutting down Ryze. And if anything, Ryze are keeping up and even overtaking them in terms of levels, even though they haven't been contesting for those bottom objectives. Um, they've been winning a lot of those fights in the top lane. They've also defended their goal zones, whereas on the side of Cubby Chance, they actually lost their top tier one goal zone. So next fight in that top lane, they won't have the speed flux and they won't have a goal zone to retreat to. Yeah, that's going to be a huge disadvantage for them. and. Team Rise, knowing this, they're definitely going to capitalize on that simply. Oh, sneaky play from Eluna. <laughs> that <person> is much expected. No. <laughs> oh, mine. No. <laughs> yeah, it's <exactly. laughs> mine. <laughs> oh, I love those sneaky plays, but sometimes you have to do those sneaky things, right? Like just take the experience and AOS energy away from your opponents, and even if it means just committing a move, like just steal it. You're not going to be arrested for stealing no, one Pokemon. That's true. But both of these teams are—they are equal right now. We have three level tens. Double level nines at the moment. They are neck to neck. But oh. still, I don't see so. Oh, here comes oh. the jump. This might just be able to say commit. Oh, no. Do that as well. Uh, quite unfortunate for Glaceon. Instead of chasing the Glaceon, the Glaceon comes to you, Daddy. Oh, no. It's moments like that <laughs> when you just eject yourself into a KO. And that was just because they had no vision. They had no idea that Cup of Chance was there. And I'm pretty sure Eeyore probably jumped as he saw all three Pokemon in that bush. Dev did try to come in and go in for the save, but to lose him too, that's a big loss on the side of Ryze and a big boost of experience on the side of Kabuchan. Really great rotation. Just goes to show how important vision is in a game of Pokemon Unite. Oh man, I was just about to talk about the point on the Glaceon thing. I, I look at KS, I'm like, they have no one here other than Ushiki who has enough mobility to actually go in the back line. We're not talking about mobility to the most oh, movement, but when yeah. you look at dashing potential, Ushiki has that. I highly doubt it is going to be the Venusaur being the solution to this Glaceon anyways. But with that being said, and then that happened and it was like, oh no, it's like, okay, that is the solution. What we do is that we wait for them to come to us. So if only that was a, a strat that everyone could fall back. It to worked. Quite it worked once. That's all you need. And I think sure. I think that caught Team Rise by surprise. I think they were like, no, what are the odds? Like jump in and there's like three Pokemon from Team KS waiting for him. Yeah. Now it looks like we are looking for a little bit of a split here. So Kabuchan's focusing on the Reggie and Lucky up top. Down bottom though, Ryze are looking to grab that experience for themselves. Um, but Dev may be thinking of going for the steal himself, but unfortunately Mimikyu not going to be able to outsteal from a Urshifu at all. Down bottom though, Axe securing the Reggie steal buff for the team, and they didn't get any KOs unfortunately. So even though Kabuchan did try and go for the deny with some of their supports, at least they weren't getting KO'd, not giving experience away. But we are looking at a bottom fight, though. Lots of Pokemon converging on that Tier 1 goal zone. Big defense coming in from Ryze as well. Trevenant going to be chased off the goal zone. Axe trying to run away. Thankfully, the Rock Tomb doesn't connect, but they are still on their speed flux. And look at this Urshifu just jumping onto some of these squishies. You're going to have to try an agility off of that speed flux, getting too far slow. Dev, though, going to be slowed down by that Surf too. Kirby Chance, are they really going to stick around for this? We've seen what's happened time and time again. You stick around for far too long and you're going to be punished for sticking around. It's going to be Ryze now trying to go for that push onto the Tier 1 goal zone. And you get connections on all four Pokemon, but with just two of these Pokemon here, I don't think you're going to be feeling very comfortable trying to defend the goal zone. And a massive 43 point overdunk. Yeah, but I don't think they can actually defend that in any ways. They got the numbers as well. Even the Moonlight is there. Well, you the, can try to shove them away. The biggest punish, right, was that Urshifu and Venusaur overstepped their bounds into the speed flux. Now, the team is still spread apart. Got to be so careful here. Trevenant taking a lot of damage. Going to get the heals up with the Moonlight, though. But can they get that reset off? Axe-Q is playing with fire here, going very deep in there with his attacks. Verna Anger connecting. Forcing the Unite as well for Axe Q, having to heal back up. Very big pushback from that Trevenant, but in the back lines though, Urshifu looking to get Axe Q. He hasn't finished him off yet, he is still there! He's got too much health. There's no Venusaur, Urshifu also getting knocked out. And is it time for Ryze to come in for cleanup duty? Or can Kabuchan salvage this game and force a 2-0 sweep? They're hanging on, but with an Elder Goss, they're running out of health, running out of healing. And with the Clefable here, the king of healing in Pokemon Unite, this might just be it. 
Oh man, it, basically I get the idea what Eeyore is trying to do. He was trying to do a focus fire. as Kishan and Kermo was Damn. not able to actually do. Oh, but this time about, this could be what we're looking for. Oh, the Kermo the, the view, together with the Crossle as well. And they are going to be getting on the Venusaur. That is going to be four men down together with the Air Shiver from the side of Team KS. They don't need the Ray Ray. They can go straight for the scoring here. And they're going to be dunking it in the faces of Team KS. Is this what? Rise is looking for right now. Now, even with the return from Crossflow, it's not going to be making any time. And that's going to be yet another 100 points being dumped by AXQ from Team Rise. Yeah, and Elder Gloss just came in, smacked the Rayquaza a few times, and Eeyore just comes in, knocking on the door. Hi. Hey, hello. You want a free trip back to base? <laughs> Gives him one for free. 20 seconds to go. We're seeing a bit of a skirmish here, but Kabuchan's. 100% this team is already having to think about game number three now because no way they're going to make the comeback happen here for game number two. And I think for Rise, happy to bring it to game number three. It is now the moment of truth. Who is the better team? Yeah. Is it going to be the Indonesia champions over here, Team Rise, or will it be represent this year? Second place winner from the Japan. It's going to be quite a big one, now, despite it being a win for them. Team Rise, they are still having their serious game mode faces over here as they know that they're about to proceed to the deciding match. This is It is going to be to be two situations and more. We're jumping into the game here, Flavor. Game number three. We're going to find out who is going to be continuing on through the upper bracket and playing against Talon PH in the upper bracket finals. And who's going to be going down to the lower bracket and will have to survive in the lower bracket gauntlet. Kabuchans versus Rise. Everything is on the line for these teams. Who's going to make it through? Let's find out. We've had some pretty interesting drafts so far. And for me, Serena making a reappearance has definitely been a bit of a surprise. But can Kabuchan make the Serena work? There have been so many conflicting opinions on this Pokemon. It's... I think the general consensus for a lot of people has been it's just not great. There are so many other choices that do what Serena does but better. But maybe, maybe Kabuchan has figured out the solution. The answer to playing Serena well. Yeah, and it, most likely we'll try to see whether or not how the outcome will be for them actually running the Serena for themselves. Yeah. So looking at the lane so far, we're looking at Ryze playing hyper aggressive. The fact that they managed to get Zoro for Eeyore, this is also a deny pick from Kabi Chance. This is a Pokemon that they actually played with Kumpei in their earlier matchup. For Eeyore to get this, he has played a lot of Zoro in the past. He's not new to Zoro at all, and he understands the playstyle for Zoroark. Has to play super fast, needs to also be very careful of his position. And also, wherever he goes, he has to consider the long-term uh, the long-term investments of investing into the lane, right? He can either focus on that bottom lane and make sure AxQ gets what he needs or sustain Dev, make sure Dev has a great game so that he can continue to solo top lane for the rest of the game and then Eeyore can support his team in the remaining team fights as that game goes on. Now, Dev is all right so far. He's not being pressured at all, but they do have Eeyore coming and getting a nice little KO onto that Clefable. Instant, yeah. Instant I think it would be a better scenario if they were able to actually get a war total. I guess it's just going to be whoever, yeah. whoever is there. Anyways, of course, slamming dunk on this war total, not allowing him to actually make an escape over here, trying to get any form of shielding from the goalposts, and of course, an opportunity for team members of Team Rise to actually go for a little bit of point dunking for themselves over here. Currently in the lead here with 77 points, with the additional 5 points there coming on from Zoroy. Meanwhile, we do see Team KS making their rotations towards the bottom lane. It's going to take a while. Pokemon's yeah. here. And it's going to be the Thunder on the Pikachu as well. So you've got amazing synergy between Thunder and Mean Look on that Umbreon. So Eluna and Axe Q together, you have to be so careful if you're Kabi Chance. The damage that's going to come from these two and the fact that you can't escape, you got to, you got to be prepared for that. Uh, hopefully they have the tank for it, but they do have a Clefable. So Clefable can actually deal with the Pikachu with this kind of build very well. I presume it's going to be... Um, Thunder and Thunderbolt for Axe Q. So having that it, set it's up just damage. the team. It's, like, it's, like, it's like all he needs damage oh. over here. Serving run here by the Slowbro, but look at that Thunder Bay landed off as well. Down to half HP here for the Slowbro. He Don't does have the shield, off. but all that is going to be nothing if the HP actually goes down all the way down. Of course, Red Eyes here might just fall. It's going to be in the hands of Dragonite here. That's going to be additional healing for the whole team for a period of time. Three-man defense here. It's going to be the Blitzy, the Pikachu together with the Umbreon. They do have the damage, but look at that Zoroark. So waiting for him to see 
get in position to actually do any form of action here upon the team members of Team KS. Yeah, level he was nine. really leveled. He's, he's actually on the verge of getting level 10. So he's way over leveled in this matchup. So this is your time to shine. Even committing the Unite oh. as well. Oh my goodness. Isn't that, a, isn't that an eject on the slow, bro? Yes. Oh. Well, I mean, you're not, you're not going to be feeding away the experience to Eeyore, so that was totally worth it. So, so an eject for a Unite, that's yep. a big win over there. Very big win. Um, thankfully for Clefable, not going to be knocked out. I think he was being chased by Eeyore, but thankfully for Clefable, one of the tankier supports, especially with Moonlight. And Reggie Alecki, this is going to help Kabichans just take his map control away from Rise. Down bottom though, Rom not going to be feeling oh, too happy. Combo. Yeah, the combo <laughs> is kind of gross to look at. Um, the Dragonite is actually going to be coming down here as well. So jumping onto Eluna, but do you want to jump onto an Umbreon who comes in with the Unite as well. Pikachu is coming into the fight too. Going onto the goal zone, Axe, you got to be careful of his positioning. He is still a Pikachu. Big Thunder raining down on that Dragonite, doing some big damage. But again, being out healed by that Clefable and Rise trying to pick and choose their fights because they're running a lineup that can be heavily punished if they are too far forward. Yeah, and I, I like how you mentioned on the combo and they just executed cool. just as is. Meanwhile, Eeyore escaping the grass from the Blastoise and of course, he's not going to be running one for this because it, it is going to be the buzzword. We have to remember team members are I all heard? here as well. Hydro Time have been committed Dang. and they are able to actually get that take down here on that buzzword. Meanwhile, here in the bottom lane is going to be Serena decided to disengage and re-engages back upon Umbreon together the with the Lissy as well. But Serena is going to be the one to get carried out instead due to the damage output coming off of this Pikachu. It's going to be the Thunder as well. Where is the lockdown? Where are the follows and where are the assistance from Team KS? And Ryza trying to take this objective because Hydro Typhoon, because it was committed to Dev, they know it's not going to be available in those fights. And no steal for Close. you, they say. That mean <laughs> look on the Dragonite. Naughty, Great naughty. <laughs> the Luna shaking his finger. Not this no. time, brother. I mean, I was just, I, I saw that from, from, from a mile away. So, oh, he's charging it. It's like, nope. <laughs> It's okay. But this is this is the thing. It's one, one of the reasons why Umbreon is such an annoying Pokemon to play against. The mean look, horrible to play against, but very great for the team that's actually going to benefit. But look at this, they're committing the Unite onto Pikachu, but Axe gets away scot-free. There was no damage follow-up at all. They got the stun, but that was basically it. Nice Q, free to do whatever he wants in the back lines. The team doing a pretty great job sitting on that goal zone. Serena again trying to jump onto that Pikachu, but supported by the Blissey just makes it so difficult to do anything to this small, tiny yellow attacker. And this Serena is just sitting on top of Axe Q, but Axe Q's like just shrugging everything off, doesn't care. And he's so annoyed, he uses the Thunderstorm. I think they stick around a little bit too long, especially oh when it comes to the gosh. Blast as well. He was just lingering around. You could actually see his HP just falling. Falling? Uh, I didn't see it move, sir. So. What, for Blastoise? Oh, I thought I, 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 I meant Axe Q's Yeah, Yeah, so, yeah, so, so, uh, so I think just, I just saw Serena relentlessly oh, yeah, yeah. chasing down this Pikachu and nothing happened. <laughs> just nothing. I was like, what is going on? This... This is a really tough game for Kabu Chans. There's still room here. Look at that. Three minutes and ten seconds on the clock. Level 13 on that Zoroark as well. And none of the team members uh, from Team KS is already at level 13. It's going to be Dragon Knight at 12. Meanwhile, the lowest numbers from Team Rise is at 11. Meanwhile, no. coming from KS is level 10. No. And meanwhile, Bonnie getting themselves with this arena. And they're definitely going to be very happy with that for Team Rise. Well, I mean, it's free experience for Eeyore and look at the level difference between these two teams my goodness the minimum level on the side of Rise is 11 they're averaging at about 12 to 13 but for Kabuchans you've mostly got all of your experience 11 and, in your 12. 11 and 12 most of your experience for Kabuchans is on the Dragonite and the Blastoise they will play very big roles in this upcoming Wraith Quasar fight which is going to start to kick off in 30 seconds but with Red Eyes here no steal great lock in there from the Dragonite perfect hyper beam secure yeah, they got that one, finally. I mean, they didn't get the previous one as well, but I guess this time they're going to take that win. Meanwhile, then, but that becomes an option lead for the Zora White to actually do a little bit of scoring at that top area, 37 points leading towards the widening up the gap even more at this current moment. It's a big difference here. There's roughly 149 points in between them. Oh, the mean look, connecting onto the Blastoise, forcing out the rapid spin just so that he can get out scot-free. Thankfully, they drove Clefable, so remember the Clefable factor 
as long as they can constantly hit with the Moonlight, KS can fight for as much as they want. Ryze will start to lose eggs. That's one of the things with Blissey. But if they want to try and fight into this, they do have that Bliss assist. Serena coming in from the back lines, going for a triple stomp, using the Unite as well. Almost getting the Unite onto Axe Q, but the Thunderstorm coming out again. Just can't connect onto that Pikachu. And it looks like we are looking at a bit of a reset here. So there is no Bliss assist, no Thunderstorm, and no Unite for that Serena. The fight still continues though, but hang on a minute. Boswell has been eliminated. Big damage from that Hyper Beam from that Dragon. We do have Blastoise zoning at the Pikachu and the Blissey. They do have Eeyore coming in as well, but they lost another one. Eluna is down on that Umbreon. Three Pokemon left. Typhoon gets thrown down as well. But it looks like Serena securing the Rayquaza. Rise have been wiped. And Cabochans are going to take the game. Oh, this is a horrible turn of events here for Team Ride, despite them snowballing and having the time of their lives here from early game to mid game and first into the late game itself. But it seems that the clash of Titans here at the Rayquaza pit sides more towards the side of Team KS at this moment. And Team KS are ready to dunk in the points here after getting this advantage of taking down the recruit was just a while ago and they're knocking in front of the base of Team Rise at this moment. Danny, this is definitely not what Team Rise was looking forward to in this final few minutes in the game. A lot happened. A lot happened. This A lot happened and it's def I want to break everything down because I feel like there were a lot of micro plays that really set things up for, for Kabi Chance. And even on the side of Rise, there were some things that happened that really prevented them from being able to make a turnaround happen. So congratulations firstly to Kabi Chan. They are the last team from Japan in the upper bracket. And they are looking to be the first grand finalists here at the Pokemon Unite Asia Champions League 2024. But they have one more opponent before that happens. Yeah. And that's Talon PH. And that matchup is going to be coming right up next. Rise, on the other hand, unfortunately, will be pushed down to the lower bracket and will be playing again tomorrow for a chance of that slot.